August 2011. Soldier Magazine, a popular Russian publication on military and private military affairs, publishes an in-depth expose on the clandestine private military group known as USEC, or United Security. Although PMC companies typically keep much of their business held close to their chests, a journalist belonging to Soldier Magazine performed diligent investigative journalism to glean as many details as he could about this mysterious organization. This is the full history of USEC. The story of USEC starts with Brian Kernigan, an American businessman born and raised in an unknown southwestern state, possibly Texas. His parents owned a lucrative trucking business that routinely hauled goods to and from Mexico. When Kernigan came of age, he inherited the family business and took over as president of the company. With routine border crossings across one of the most notoriously dangerous areas in North America, Kernigan underestimated the dangers associated with the family business. This was an issue his parents never had to endure but as cartel and gang violence continued to grow along the U.S.-Mexico border, Kernigan began to receive reports of his trucks being attacked and hijacked by cartel gunmen. As these incidents continued to increase in frequency, and even resulted in the deaths and kidnappings of some employees, Kernigan began to hire armed guards to serve as escorts for company tractor trailers hauling valuables amidst the sprawling gangland that continued to grow along the border areas. This decision proved to be lucrative, and Kernigan's trucks could now ship even more valuable products with far fewer losses now that they had hired guns to guard their cargo. Being a sensible businessman, Kernigan soon realized that it would be far more profitable to build his own private security company rather than hire guards from other companies. At the same time, Kernigan ordered that all trucks that are to be making border crossings are to be up-armored, something that was nearly unheard of in the American trucking industry, but it was a decision that proved to boost profits even higher. As Kernigan's side business continued to grow, he began to take on clients that didn't need goods transported, but rather desired his armed escorts instead. The writing was on the wall, and Kernigan realized there was far more money to be made in private security and military work than there could ever be made in trucking. There was one big problem, however. Kernigan was not a military man and had no experience in managing a large military organization. But through skillful networking, he met retired Brigadier General George Steiner, owner of Redbird Security Company, and the two negotiated a merger. Steiner was a talented military officer, but his talents as a businessman were lackluster. After inheriting Redbird Security Company after the death of his partner, the company began to decline and lose profits. This is when Kernigan stepped in and was able to negotiate a favorable deal to acquire the company. This merger created the now newly formed Kernisek Security Company, what was to become a major component of the future USEC. United Kingdom, 1994. John Berger, a Royal Marines Colonel, has just entered into retirement. Although Berger had dreams of vacations on sunny white sand beaches, tropical cruises, and much needed rest and relaxation, he quickly found retired life to be boring in comparison to his military life. While visiting with an old military friend at a pub, his friend informed Berger that he had found a lucrative side hustle during his own retirement that involved protecting ships passing through the Horn of Africa from pirates. It didn't take much convincing before Berger found himself signing on to one of these vessels and beginning a career of maritime high-risk civilian contracting. On Berger's first voyage, his ship was attacked by pirates. Armed only with a revolver, Berger failed to repel the attack, and while his life was spared, the ship and much of its crew was lost. With an inexperienced crew and poor equipment mostly to blame, Berger returned to the UK and signed on with a new company, but this time with experienced officers and much better equipment, including semi-automatic AR-15 carbines. Again, Berger's ship was attacked off the coast of Somalia, but this time the attack was easily repelled. Not letting the usefulness and effectiveness of proper armed escorts to go unnoticed, upon returning to the UK, Berger establishes the Safe Sea Maritime Paramilitary Transport Company. During the growth of Safe Sea, Berger met Ronald Henry Hunt, a former UK civil servant and who would go on to become the head of business development for USEC. Hunt helped Berger acquire one government contract after the next, and soon, Hunt encouraged Berger to grow Safe Sea into an international level, suggesting a merger with the American Kernisek Company. The negotiations were successful, and in 1999, Kernisek merged with Safe Sea to form the United Security Company, or USEC. With the shrewd business qualities of Kernigan, military experience of George Steiner, management skills of Berger, and diplomatic prowess of Hunt, USEC immediately began to make a reputation for itself around the globe. Within just a few years, USEC gained the attention of the Pentagon, 
as the invasion of Iraq began to roll out. But USEC was only one of dozens of hired PMC groups in Iraq, with their reputation being shadowed by larger and much well-known organizations such as Blackwater. But what led USEC to come out on top was not because of anything they did right, but because they didn't do anything wrong. With few exceptions, nearly every PMC group in Iraq experienced some kind of scandal, besides USEC. By 2007, USEC had built up a reputation of strict professionalism and attention to detail. Most notably, above all else, their operators never ever allowed details to leak of any kind of the nature of their business. This reputation caught the attention of the multinational corporation Terra Group, which signed on USEC to take over all armed security at all Terra Group locations. With American and British soldiers entering retirement after completing their tours of duty in Iraq and Afghanistan, there was also now a massive pool of eligible and experienced recruits for USEC to hire. But USEC would not go without a spotless record that was free of scandal forever. Sometime around 2009, USEC brought on Gus Van Saint, a former U.S. Army Green Beret, onto their board of directors as the director of special operations. It wasn't long until a scandal erupted in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Gus Van Saint is an extremely important name that you'll need to remember. As of today, USEC employs around 15 to 18,000 employees, with 7,500 trained warfighters across several countries. In the timeline of escape from Tarkov, it is estimated that 500 to 1,000 USEC operators are now trapped within the blockaded Tarkov region desperately attempting to both hide or destroy terror group's secrets, as well as survive and extract from the area. And now, it's time for your opinion. Given the extensive history of USEC, its proven professionalism and effectiveness, and quality leadership, do you think that USEC will successfully keep terror group's secrets safe from the Russian government and bear? Or do you think that the situation will either fizzle out or explode into further violence before this happens? Also, what do you think about the mysterious director of special operations, Gus Van Saint? I certainly have my own theories about him, but that's a video for another day. Our channel is finally seeing some steady growth, and it's all thanks to each and every one of you that have liked, commented, and subscribed. Every one of these actions tells YouTube's algorithm to promote our videos to new viewers, so I really can't thank you guys enough. If you'd like to see me play Escape from Tarkov live, or just come by to have a chat with me, go check out my Twitch stream. I play five days per week, and I'd love to have you stop by. It always brings a smile to my face when someone stops in and tells me that they saw one of our videos. I have more content to expand upon soon, but until then, I'm Jeff with EUL Gaming. Good luck out there.